Hey, John. Hey, Jeanette. Can you guys hear me okay? All right, how are we doing today? Doing okay, Chef. Yeah, doing good, good. John, you there? It looks like you're frozen. Hmm. Okay, all right, so might as well get started. Today's class is a ton of fun and something that you can get in Chicago, you can get in Boston on the North End, uh, a pasta with vodka sauce. So we gave you some gnocchi. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is get one of your pots boiling with water so that we could cook those in a little bit. Um, and then the, the pasta with vodka sauce, the vodka sauce itself is a pretty uh, different process. So we're gonna make a marinara first and then we're gonna make our cream reduction and we're gonna buzz the two together. Um, you have vodka and it's not in the recipe, um, but some, most vodka sauces actually don't really use vodka, which is kind of funny. Um, we're going to go ahead and put it in ours, but I gave you the recipe without it too. Uh, either way, it's about, about an ounce and a half of vodka. It's not that much. If you don't want to put it in yours, you can go ahead and drink it. Um, but the average, like the, the acid and the chemicals in the vodka sauce had, uh, it has a natural chemical reaction with the tomatoes and the cream to kind of brighten it up a little bit, just like adding vinegar to a sauce, it reacts with the proteins in your mouth. Um, so we're gonna be able, we're gonna add it to ours, um, but I could tell you that some of the top Italian restaurants in Chicago I've worked at who serve vodka sauce, who you've probably had it at, don't put it in there. <laughs> so, so it's completely up to you. Um, what we have for our ingredients, if we can all see, you should all have Oil, garlic, vodka, salt and pepper. These two are not measured because it's to taste. Basil, tomatoes, and then we have gnocchi, mascarpone, Romano cheese, and heavy whipping cream. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is chop our garlic. So we can go ahead and chop that up. And then I'm going to actually move the camera over to the stove here so that you can see an overhead view of the pan as we're doing it. So you won't get to see this pretty face that much, but you'll get to see inside the pan, which I think will be helpful. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and chop your garlic. You just need a rough chop on it. And I'll set there we go. Up. And then we can try and go from there. Oh, this does not look like a good idea for my webcam, but you know what? I like to live dangerously. This is, this is not smart. <laughs> okay. Let's see the full power of these things. Don't fall. There we go. Okay. So, I'm trying to do something with this cord. I don't think I'll be able to, but give it a shot. There we go. Look at that. So I'm going to turn my pan on like a medium low heat. What I want to do is chop the garlic up. Go ahead and chop both cloves. Um, now I know this looks like a lot of garlic, but remember we're going to mild this out with pasta, with cream, with cheese, all sorts of lovely stuff. So it's not going to uh, be as aggressive as you might think. And doing it over a lower heat is going to give us a softer, sweeter garlic flavor. If I were to do this over a high heat, uh, my garlic would have a really strong garlicky flavor. So I'm gonna add the oil in, and swirl it around till it coats the bottom of the pan. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and just drop that garlic right in there. And now what I'm looking for is this garlic to just kind of slowly simmer. I want it to, to get a very light golden brown. I'm not looking for a heavy golden brown around the edges of the garlic. Um, I just want to see a nice, gentle, roasted garlic. Now, we gave you guys a few, uh, pureed tomatoes. There's a few different types you can use. Now, when you're using uh, canned tomatoes, I like personally whole peeled tomatoes. Um, I think that the less processed, the less cooking time it takes for them. But these, these, uh, these pureed tomatoes we got you are Carmelina brand, so absolutely fantastic. It, it's got um, it's just straight pulp and tomato puree. So there's nothing added to it, no extra like ingredients or citric acid or anything that's gonna require you to cook it longer to get rid of that acidity. Um, so that's why these ones are actually kind of perfect for what we're gonna do because these are only gonna take about 15 to 20 minutes to cook in the sauce or in, in the pan with the garlic to get that raw tomato flavor gone and make sure it's not acidic. So, garlic's starting to move. You don't want it to uh, go any rougher than that. So adjust your heat and play with it. So you just have a nice gentle simmer, okay? And you'll see already after a minute of this, it's already starting to become a little bit translucent, which is what we're looking for. Um, but it's not browning really on the edges because the lower we do it, again, the more those natural sugars are gonna cook and the sweeter and subtler and uh, our, our garlic's gonna be. And you can smell it. I mean, you'll smell that sweet roasted garlic flavor that's just so fantastic. That's what we're looking for. My garlic is almost there and I can tell because now it's starting to get a little bit of a brown color but it's not burning on the edges you know and that's good now you can roast this garlic a lot slower if you want to but this works really well for what we're doing I'm going to add the tomatoes in let this come to a simmer and I'm going to let this simmer for about 15 minutes. Now I'm not looking to thicken this really. I'm not looking for anything but to infuse that garlic flavor into the tomatoes and cook out that bit of raw tomato flavor. Cause again, these are really good tomatoes. So that's going to help. So I'm going to move that over here to do what it does best. And now I'm going to start with the next one. Let me know when you guys are at that point and we can get started with the next one. Hey, Chef. Yes, sir. What's the significance of the San Marzano tomatoes? How's that? So San Marzano is a, is a, a breed of tomato, if you would. Um, the San Marzano tomatoes, uh, I'm going to keep talking, but I'm going to add my, my heavy cream to the pan so it starts reducing what we got. So, San Marzano is a varietal of tomatoes. The, the seeds can't come from Italy. Uh, mostly they're grown in California. Uh, let me take that back. Mostly they're grown in Italy, but the ones we get here are mostly in California. The ones you guys have are actually, today that I gave you is actually an Italian San Marzano tomato. Um, the San Marzano ones have a, a natural sweetness to it. They don't carry a lot of natural acidity. They're just a really wonderful tomato to use. And so a lot of chefs prefer them for, uh, for cooking with sauces. Now, if I was gonna add the vodka, which I realized I just forgot to do, I would add it to this pan and reduce it down before I add the heavy cream. So I'm a knucklehead and we were talking and I forgot to do it, but let's pretend the vodka is in here. <laughs> Can we put it in? Yeah, put it in. Put it in and boil it down. You don't want, so you're not smelling the raw alcohol flavor anymore. Because if, if the alcohol is still there, what's going to happen is all this fat is going to separate and, and it's going to look like curds and whey. We don't want that. So we're going to want to cook that, that vodka down a little. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to bring this cream up to a boil and I want to start reducing down. So 
the reduction process is important to, to monitor with this because two things could happen. And I'll show you one. I'll show you how it's going to boil. It'll boil over if you're not paying attention, or it'll burn at the bottom. We don't, obviously we don't want either of those. Um, but if it's if when it comes up, we're going to drop the heat a little bit and control it coming down. And I'll show you how to avoid if it starts to boil up on you, where it's going to boil over. What you could do to save it from that because it's kind of important. Is it on medium high heat? Uh, yeah, you could start it on a high heat if you want, just to get it heated through. But then I would drop it down to a medium heat. Okay. It's all right. So now my cream is about to boil over, and I could see because the bubbles are coming thick on the sides, and there's like a cap on the top here, and that's not a good sign. Um, I mean, it's fine, it's not hurting anything except my stove and everything I'm gonna have to clean up afterwards. So what I do is as it starts to boil over, I'll actually lift it off the heat and let it calm down first. Hence the term like simmer down. And then I'll lower the heat and put it back on the stove. So it's not as aggressive. If I just lower the heat, there's a lot of carryover heat and it's gonna to continue to boil over. Now, when we do this, like at the club, when we make vodka sauce for something, um, we're making get batches with like six gallons of heavy cream. So the reduction process is slow and it's literally like a four hour process to get it down properly, um, to add it in so that it doesn't scorch on us. But since we're doing it at home with this size batch, it should come down pretty quickly. I love vodka sauce. And the, the great thing about this sauce is you can make a big batch and freeze it. Um, and it works really well out of the freezer. You know, not, not a ton of sauces do, but vodka sauce and just straight marinara sauce work great. At home, I'll make, you know, three, four gallons of it and, and put it in one quart containers and freeze it. And you can just get, you know, like these kind of containers that we give you, you go rewash them in the dishwasher and then use them for freezing sauce. They're great. I buy them at the, at the restaurant supply store for myself at home and we use them all the time. But this way, if my wife needs, uh, you know, sauce for pasta, she's got it, she pull it out of the freezer and done. Um, a lot less hassle when we're making dinner. So my bubbles now are starting to thicken quite a bit and they're gonna continue to thicken a little more. What I'm looking for, and I normally give this just a little swirl and that'll just kind of help move it out because we're dealing with fire underneath and based on your stove, if you're using a gas stove, the, where the oxygen hits is going to control where the heat hits on your pan. Um, so just a little moving every once in a while helps kind of smooth that out and avoid scorching. Uh, so the bubbles are starting to get a little thick and I want them to get thicker. What I'm looking for is a thick paste almost. Um, so I'm going to let this keep boiling down so that we can get to that consistency because the thicker this is, it means the less water that's in here, which means the more fat we could add to it like mascarpone and cheese and the more delicious of the sauce we're gonna have, the less watered down tasting sauce. Now, I've worked at some places that um, they'll make this cream reduction and set it aside, and then as they make marinara and they need it for service, they'll just add it. Um, I like to do this all at once and let the flavors kind of fuse together. I think it's, it's a much uh, better end result for a product. Um, at this point, because my tomatoes have been cooking for about 10 minutes, I'm going to add some salt to it and a little bit of pepper. And then I want it to keep cooking. I don't normally season in the beginning because salt will pull moisture from, from the tomatoes. And what it's going to do is give you a greater chance of it scorching at the bottom. Um, so I wait until they cook a little bit before I add the salt. You can see this is starting to thicken up nicely. Oh yeah. So if, if you look at my sauce now and the size of the bubbles, it looks really thick. 
And if I was making, say, an ice cream base or something like that, this is the thickness I would go for because this is going to be rich and like a thick sauce, almost like an Alfredo. That's not what I want for this. I want to go deeper than that. I want to get this thicker. I want to cook out more moisture. Um, so I'm going to let this keep crunching down a little bit until it's super, super, super thick. And because the addition of the mascarpone and the, the Romano cheese is going to add a lot more fat to this. And so the less, uh, the less water that's in here, the more I can combine it and have less of a chance of the sauce breaking on me. And by breaking, I mean where it gets grainy looking and, and just not very attractive. Make sure you stir your tomatoes every once in a while um, because we don't want to end up with burnt tomatoes on the bottom. Uh, and then you have the, the entire base of your sauce you can't use. Sir. Very exciting sitting there watching a pot boil. Uh, do you guys have your water on for your pasta? Not yet. Yep. Okay, if you're, if you're planning on eating it now, I would put your water on. If not, you can wait. And this sauce will sit just fine until you're ready for it. So now my sauce is starting to really thicken up my cream, and it's going to continue to thicken. There's going to be a point, though, where I've over reduced it and it'll get uh, greasy looking and that we don't want because what's gonna happen is after a certain point, you have more fat than any kind of natural waters in there and it's gonna separate. So uh, you don't want that. So if you look at the thickness of my sauce now, it's really thick. I mean, it's really come together and it's almost like the bottom of my pot is almost burned because we're running out of water and now it's just straight fat. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and that's exactly the thickness I'm looking for super thick and you'll see as it cools a little I mean it's even thicker because we want this to cool a little bit before we add the mascarpone and the Romano cheese to this okay so, my sauce is thick now. You know what, I actually think I'm gonna take this a touch thicker. I like, to live, I like to live dangerously, you know what I mean? Speaking of dangerous, is it, um, does it mean I have my heat too high on the tomato if it's um, bubbling and popping up like lava? No, it's because the tomatoes are so thick, which is a good thing for this sauce. Now, if this is a normal marinara, I wouldn't want tomatoes this thick. But because it's a vodka sauce and we're going to add all this into here, I choose a thicker tomato like this. Um, so, no, it's completely normal. Uh, I would just stir it a little, get it back over the stove top. Um, you also want to taste it and see if you need more salt. But we can always adjust salt later, too. So, now that my cream is at that great thickness, it almost gets a slight yellowish hue to it, which means that the fats are about to start separating, which we want to get to this point, but we don't want the fats to separate. And side note, if your fats do start to separate, you could add just a touch of water to bring it back. Um, I'm gonna add the mascarpone and the Romano cheese, and I'm gonna just stir this to bring it all together. I'm not gonna put this back on the heat because mascarpone has a very high fat content, and if I were to turn it back on the stovetop heat, it's gonna get greasy really fast. But if I just do it like this with a whisk or a spoon or anything, it's gonna to come together really nice and make this beautiful cream mixture. And this is where the basic essence of the vodka sauce comes from. Um, so this will not see the stovetop again until it's in the tomatoes. Now, I'm going to take my tomatoes back over here. 
I'm going to add some basil and we're going to blend this. So does, do you guys both have a, a stick blender? By stick blender, I mean something uh, yeah. like this. So if you don't have one, you can use a whisk and that's okay. It's just not gonna be as smooth looking of a sauce. But with the stick blender, it's gonna emulsify everything together and make it absolutely gorgeous. So I got my basil in. I'm gonna add this cream mixture. Now I turn the heat off to add the cream mixture. All that goodness in there. And then with the stick blender, I'm gonna blend it all together. Now, if you see that color, I mean, that is a vodka sauce color. That orange, just delicious, creamy color. Um, are you guys doing step-by-step -step right now or are you just watching and doing it later? Because I can wait for you to buzz yours up if you want. Um, I'm following along, but my uh, cream is not that uh, thick yet. Okay, then take your time. Don't rush it because it's just going to mess it up. Um, yep. So now I'm going to taste first seasoning, just add a little bit of salt to this, and then the next step will be to boil the gnocchi, and I'll walk you guys through that. Step. Now, the first thing you want is boiling water, right? Pretty simple, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Boiling water is great for gnocchi. Now, you, as long as it's at least hot enough to poach, meaning in like the 180, 190 degrees, you're good. But boiling with, with this type of gnocchi that I gave you, it's going to help you visually see when it's cooked. Gnocchi is one of the few pastas that you can see from a distance whether it's cooked. The other ones you kind of got to look at and watch and taste and touch. But once it's boiling, I'm going to add my gnocchi in. And I want to see this come up. So if the, if the pot's boiling and the gnocchi's cooking, it'll float to the top with a little bit of love, like just a little motion. Because what's gonna happen is the eggs inside there are gonna to start to souffle that hold the gnocchi together and the potatoes are gonna lighten and some of that flour is gonna wash out and absorb and it's just gonna float. It's gonna become buoyant right to the top of the, pasta, of, the, of the pot. But gnocchi is one of those dumplings that only take, like most dumplings, just take a few minutes to cook. And there's some really great bought options you can get out there. Um, you know, here at the club, we make all our gnocchi, but you can buy them and there's some, there's some wonderful options. Uh, and if you find a brand you like, I would remember it and stick with it because there's also just as many terrible ones. <laughs> so, so it's important to, to find one that, that suits your taste and that, that you're, you're, you're happy with. Okay, so you can see them start to come up right now, right? That means that they're starting to cook which is a good thing. They're moving because of the motion of the boiling water, but they're going to come to a point where they're just floating. And at that point, we let them cook for another 30 seconds and we know that they're done. Man, that's a great view. Yeah. You never you never get to stand over a pot of pasta and watch it boil because of steam. I mean, it's great. It's great for your skin. That's why I'm so gorgeous. But, you know, um, so so if you look around the sides here, you could see they've floated now. The gnocchi are done cooking. I'm going to give them an extra 30 seconds or so just so that they lighten up just a little bit more. If you overcook them, they're going to become mashed potatoes and mush. If you undercook them, they're going to be a little gummy and pasty in, in taste and, and uh, texture. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and move this to the side because I am going to actually make an order of this pasta. So with any pasta, you want to make sure that the basic principle for pasta sauce 
is you have enough to coat the pasta and a little more to garnish. And by garnish, I mean a little bit on top or pulling at the bottom of the plate because that's gonna allow you to really enjoy it and sop up the pasta as you go, uh, or sop up the sauce as you go with the pasta. And then different pastas have different textures, right? So a rigatoni is made for a meat sauce because it's got the ridges and the big holes and the, the, the meat can kind of tuck in there. Whereas, you know, like gnocchi, it is better for, for heavier ragus and, and heavier base sauces like this because the potato, it's gonna absorb some of the moisture in here and coat nicely. So I'm gonna take the gnocchi and add it to the vodka sauce. And now we're gonna do what's called the marrying process. So what's important about this is you allow the pasta and the sauce to cook together in the pan for a minute or two and they, they have what's called marry. And that means that they fight all the time and uh, the pasta the gnocchi learns that they're the wrong way to put milk in the refrigerator. <laughs> Kidding. Um, <laughs> so what that means is that the gnocchi, some of the starch in, is releasing from the gnocchi into the sauce and helping it thicken it. And some of the sauce is being absorbed by the gnocchi and helping it, uh, helping flavor the gnocchi. So it's a really cool process, but it's the most important process when you're actually cooking pasta, which is why places that have like that pasta where they just throw it on the plate and then scoop a ladle of sauce on top, it's not, it, it's, it doesn't let anything shine the way it should. So if we come over here, oh man, my camera's hot. Jeez, I hope I didn't break it. Okay, so our pasta is now thick. The, or the sauce is thick, it's coating the pasta. I mean, this is what we wanna see in just a great gnocchi with vodka sauce. Now you can, add more cheese on top. I like to just tear some fresh basil just cause I like some fresh herbs on there. It's just a personal preference. Um, some people don't like it because they think that all the saltiness of the cheese and everything is, is more than enough. Um, some people like to take a whole giant herb and put it on top, which I hate because then I have to move it aside when I'm eating. So if I'm gonna put it on, I'm gonna tear it and throw it on uh, or I just won't put it on at all. But that's the basics for gnocchi with vodka sauce. Any questions? Uh, yes. Oh. Is this uh, thick enough to add the cheeses yet? Let's see. Can we spotlight that? Uh, stop stirring it for a second. Let's see a bubble. I would take it just a touch thicker. OK. And if it starts to have these solids on the side, that's still OK? Yeah, it, so it's, I mean, if you look at my saucepan here, uh, let's go back. So if you look at my saucepan here, it's got some burning on the sides. That is totally normal. And when we make the big giant batches at the club or any Italian restaurant I've ever worked at, there's a ton of burning on the bottom because heavy cream is so high in fat. And then we're reducing it down, which means we're, we're intensifying the fat percentage uh, by removing the water. So yeah, totally normal. Okay. So why is it taking us so much longer to reduce it than it took you, Chef? Because I have a much higher uh, intensity stove. I have more BTUs. Okay. That's why. That's so this thing, I mean, I could get this thing ripping hot, yeah. uh, which works great for demos and for cooking stuff, but not when you're cooking along with me. Cool. Cool. Any other questions? Uh, and the sauce... When you first did the sauce, you don't need to bring it to a boil, right? You just let it. The tomato sauce? Yeah. Yeah, you can just let it simmer. Okay. These tomatoes are so good, you can eat them right out of the can. I mean, there's some some brands like that that are just incredible. Uh, this is one of them. I'm a big fan of this brand of tomato. Um, so you can eat it right from the can and it's great. But I like to cook it a little bit just to get some of that raw tomato flavor out and sure. give you a little heartier of a sauce. And what was the brand again? Carmelina. Got it. And you, I've seen those. Uh, I know Caputo sells them. I've seen them on Amazon. Um, I'm sure you could probably get them through Instacart and stuff. Uh, but C A R M E L I N A is the brand for this. All right, well, if there's no more questions, go be Italian chefs, grow a mustache, drink some wine, have a wonderful night.
All right. Thank you, thanks, Jeff. Jeff. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Karen. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.